I think there's a there's a a little bit of a problem we have with multiple sclerosis, which is the problem of misdiagnosis. Um, and so we calculate that approximately 20% of individuals who are referred to an MS center with a diagnosis of MS actually don't have the disease. Um, and we calculate that the cost associated with MS care are significant, right? It's about $48.4 billion that it costs our healthcare system to take care of MS patients and about you know, anywhere between 30 to 40 percent of that cost is actually associated with the cost of therapies themselves. Um, so if you think that 20 percent of patients have a misdiagnosis, that's a considerable amount of people um, that are, one, um, causing expenses to the healthcare system, and two, we're also exposing people to risks associated with our disease-modifying treatments that they shouldn't be exposed to. So um, I think that the you know, the problem of misdiagnosis probably relates partially to um, the fact that we've developed diagnostic criteria that have become more and more sensitive over time. So the idea was to try to capture a larger number of MS patients. Um, and mainly the way diagnostic criteria has evolved has been by the incorporation of MRI. Um, and so we think that kind of this increased sensitivity of picking up all the MS cases has probably resulted also in, you know, that's come at the expense of decreased specificity. Um, so now it's probably, you know, some patients are made the diagnosis incorrectly. And there's several reasons for that. I think one of the reasons for that is that, um, you know, the diagnostic criteria were designed around typical um, onset events. Um, those are typical optic neuritis or a brainstem event or transverse myelitis. Um, and many times um, the you know, the, the studies that validate the diagnostic criteria were in the setting of those classical presentations. Um, but the problem is that there's, you know, we know that of the people who are referred for a diagnosis of MS, um, a considerable proportion of those, um, you know, a third to about half, depending on the center, come with atypical events. So these are people who come in with maybe some numbness tingling, maybe some cognitive dysfunction, um, maybe some kind of more like fibromyalgia-like symptoms. Um, and then if you apply the diagnostic criteria in those patients after doing an MRI, then certainly things will look a little bit different. Um, so um, those are probably the, the main reasons.